Where we at, Lante? Zero, zero, 009. Man, we've been working. You niggas is playing. We a couple weeks in. We had nine episodes. Y'all bullshitting. Hey, shout out to PV Studios at the Love. Look, if you need a space, you need a studio space, holler at my guy Terrell. Look, trust me. I'm giving you aesthetics, motherfucker. You want this aesthetic. Stop playing. The niggas ain't doing it. Shout out to my guy Lante Base God. Shout out to uh, Whiskey Right. Whiskey Right number one on Instagram. Make sure y'all follow him. That's all I'm drinking. I'm a little smizzed. I'm lying. We working. Uh, Tease Darrell is in the building. How you feeling, man? How you feeling? I'm good. I look, I, I look forward to this conversation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been looking forward for a while. Yo, um, you just started making music. Yeah. Kind of, right? Uh, 2019. Or end of 2019. The people that, that we know, you just, you just yeah. started. Yeah. Okay. Before that, you was doing... What was the... The, the platform was... Um, the, uh, you was doing like a news type... Peso posted. Peso, Peso posted. Peso posted. Teeth it. Yep. Where did we start? Can we start there? Yeah, we can start Pesos there. Pesos posted. When did you start that? Um, so that's probably like five years ago, mm. really. The, the kind of came about with uh, a friend of mine, Ernest III. He was I on know, your Ernest show. Ernest III? Yeah, he was on your yeah, show. That's my guy. Yeah, so uh, we had a group in 2011, 2012 called Peso Gang. Okay. So we was doing that at first, and then Peso the Mafia got hot, so we kind of like, dropped yeah, that. And can. it was like people around me were still calling me Peso as well. So it was like... Uh, I could do something with it. Ain't nobody really doing nothing. I was like, and I'm I'm into academics and all of that at this time. So I was like, let me just do some media stuff and see what I can do with it. So I tried to do it, and it got me in a lot of doors. I network with a lot of people, and that's how I'm able to do so much now as mm. well. But I just didn't have a, the, the proper team around me. I really didn't have no team around me at all. It was right. just me doing everything. So it was like, at a certain point, you get tired of tired of trying to do it and he was like all right let me just put my foot forward and do what I know I can do by myself at this right. point and I don't need the team to to do too much right now I can still do what I need to do and just do my research and try to you know maneuver independently right now so it just came from sort of like just wanting to do something maybe or yeah the, I got a love for music in general so it was just like me wanting to provide a platform for Baltimore artists okay. and stuff like that that's where it kind of first started from um, and I was doing free promotion. I wasn't charging nobody or nothing like that. Like that was something I actually loved to do. I wanted to see how artists get on. So I had interviews in the works, man. I had stuff that I, I wanted to do with Scola. I didn't have a camera crew, didn't have mm. a team and stuff like that. But he, he was willing to do stuff like that. And uh, a couple other local artists that wanted to do stuff. And it was just because of the doors that I was getting into. So like, I want to I wanna touch, I, I wanted to start there for a reason, right? Peso Post, it was like a media platform to to highlight Baltimore artists. Yeah. Um, how do you think, where do you see the industry, the Baltimore industry in particular, um, as a whole right now, as music wise? Like, where do you see them? Like, what is your, out, your output on it? Still overlooked. We definitely mm -hmm. still overlooked, but it's a lot of strong talent out there. Um, Shorty Shorty got gold records, you know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of people out there that's doing their thing in other, other cities currently. They mm -hmm. had to move to other cities to really, to branch off, to, to really get that exposure. And I've been seeing that a lot with a lot of our, our top artists. So I'm, mm. I'm kind of studying what they're doing, trying to follow the blueprint. Um, I try to contact some of them, you know, some of them do reach back out, you know, uh, a lot of them are down to earth, to be honest with you. Um, so some of them like uh, Lil Tay, for instance, Tay Wilson, he definitely reached back out to me and gave me a whole bunch of gems that I can kind of use since he kind of made that move um, to Atlanta, we yeah, tell you, that moved yeah, to Atlanta, right? yeah. So he moved down there, and he been doing this thing down there for a minute. Yeah. So I just kind of been trying to just, you know, learn from him, see what I can do, and just kind of just make my own mark at this point right now. So not not tease the artist, right? Not mm -hmm. just let's for a second, let's get away from that, right? Okay. But you are an artist, so it's gonna be hard. Yeah. Um, I wanna, I'm, I'm trying to tap into the mind of like peso posted, right? Because like this was like you were doing this and it was dope man like you had a, a pretty good traction around the city like a lot of people knew who you were i'm trying to understand where do you think even not just music industry now right where do you think the media platforms at because we got a, we got baltimore has media platforms as well um they might be overlooked but where do you think do you think they're doing that job how do you feel about them personally not saying no names yeah um that's kind of an on and off kind of thing because mm. a lot of them, they, they charge them for promo because they know they can, they can get the money at that point. Mm. So it's not, it doesn't always feel like it's organic. And me personally, I haven't seen the actual results from those pages. Mm. So as far as like the exposure Instagram wise and social media wise, I think it definitely helps. But as far as like what you're actually doing and making a return on your actual investment, 
I don't think it's actually getting us to a certain point yet. So you don't feel like even DJs, um, media personalities, such as myself, just being straight up, do you don't feel like a lot of them are genuine in their acts of what they're doing for the city? So yeah, so stuff like that, yes. But I'm saying talking about for like promo, for like to get your to video, to get your video posting and stuff like that. It's a lot of pages that do it out of the love. It's people that have platforms that do it out of the love because they just love music and it's it's dope music. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying like not for my music in general, just music for anybody that's making music in Baltimore. Um, it's some it's a lot of platforms that do have strong platforms where as though you can make connections and it does get you to a certain point. But I'm talking about for those specific specific ones that aren't really a person behind it mm. it's not really a person that that you can talk to it's not anybody that you can connect with it's, like a it's just a page, kind of, it's a page. Yeah, yeah it's just a page at that point and it's a lot of those that kind of label themselves as a baltimore <laughs> promo page platform. yeah a baltimore yeah. platform and it doesn't really do anything right those are more so the ones that i was referring to now you were definitely uh specific, like a baltimore platform right and you were definitely like connected to the streets far as like not just mainstream artists like i had somebody um on zero zero six i believe or seven whatever when i was at tay, tay bands i was like who are the people that you look up to or not look up to who are the people that's hot mm -hmm. you know she named everybody of course like scola um uh jiggy runner city like all the okay. people that we would name that we know but mm -hmm. i feel like on your page it was people like you said Ernest third like people that if you're not from Baltimore, or even if you're from Baltimore, you might not know about these people because they're underground, right? Yep. How are you so in touch with or in tune with these underground artists from Baltimore? Like, how did you get aware of these people? Um, it kind of started just going to like uh, Architect Studios. That was probably mm. the first real studio that I've been to. And uh, an older friend of mine, a uh, guy named Matt Bacoda, he introduced me to it because he's a rapper as well. And that was my first time actually being in the studio. Like I, I seen Young Moose in there for the first time and all that other stuff. Didn't introduce myself or nothing like that, but I actually got to see him in person and it was a different vibe. And that's where it was like kind of the first start for me at that point. Mm. That was where it kind of really started as far as like, all right, this is all right. So I'll meet him, him. Then I start going to music videos. People start inviting me places. And at the time when D1 was hot, I started trying to network with them at the time and that got me into a couple of doors as well, just kind of them being on the page and seeing what I was doing, me supporting some of the artists that they had at the time. And that kind of boasted the, the, the success that I was having at the time from right. the page. Mm, okay, so let's make this transition into the music. Do you think that because of your platform and the people you were surrounded by already, it was easier to jump into making music? Or was you already doing it and we just didn't know? I was rapping, but it wasn't nothing recorded. It wasn't serious. It was on like an iPad and stuff like that. Okay. Um, me and my homeboy Frico, who who I kind of started with, but it was nothing like I'm doing now. It's more structured. I'm trying to make sure I got a story to tell in each of my songs. It was just me rapping and freestyling. And it was no substance, no purpose at that right. time. Just so for fun, fuck it. We yeah, doing. yeah. So what made you start doing this serious? Like, what made you really say finally be like, man, I'm about to take this shit serious. Honestly, to put the battery in my homeboy back, because I feel like he got more talent than I do, <laughs> to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Like, I feel like he been, he got the voice for rapping, and I've been trying to get him rap since we was kids, since we was younger, before I even started the page. And it just, he just never took off with it, never wanted to do it. I started doing music, started taking him to the studio with me, and then he started, he dropped this tape before I did at that point. And uh, it's been going well, but I just, you know, I just kept going with it. I'm right. just continue to go on with it. And he's so, going with me, but it's just like, So I'm I guess the stopping. question should be, what motivates you to keep going? Because now you started to put the battery in your homeboy back, right? And now he's dropped the tape and it's like, man, well, I'm still going to go. What, what, what kept you going? I love music in general. Mm. So it's like, so to put it in perspective, like the first song I can like remember I fell in love with was So Into You, Tamir, and featuring Fabulous. Didn't know what it meant at the time, <laughs> didn't care, but it was the first song that I can remember I cried to because uh, I never met my grandmother. And mm -hmm. that was the first song that was like, dang, I wonder what she would be thinking and stuff like that. I wonder what she would be doing type stuff um, and just how she would feel, how she would feel about where, where I'm at in life as a kid at that point. Mm. So it's like, that was the first part of me falling in love with music. And it's always something that I wanted to do, but. I've always been a nervous person. Mm. I'm not really, I'm outgoing, but it's like with the people that, I, that love me and I love back, you feel me? It's right. not really to the public and stuff like that. I've just gotten 
to the point where I'm comfortable with not really caring. <laughs> like, so if I you feel you, how you feel, I want that that constructive criticism. Okay, that makes sense. I seen you drop, uh, you drop what? Two videos now? Or uh, three. Three videos now? Yeah. How do you think people are taking to you as an artist? Um, Still a little weird so far. It's still not accepted as much yet. I still like those those random people that come up to me like, yo, I heard your, your video and it's dope. I didn't even think you was listening to me at all. Right. So it was like, it's it's still weird, but um, the reception has been great though. I, I am getting a lot of support. Um, and the first video I got has over a thousand views. That's the other good. ones are, they steadily growing, but the first one is, that's what I'm happy about. So that was a good one for me. How much, um, how much are you looking in, at the numbers right now? Cause I know it can be discouraging sometimes, but how much are you paying that? How, how much attention are you paying it? Well, it's not really discouraging to me just because I know where I'm, I'm currently at and I know mm -hmm. where I'm still trying to go. Okay. And I know I don't really have a team around me, like mm -hmm. I said. You, so it's like I'm not, I don't got a manager. It's no networking team. It's me paying pages, paying stuff like that to try to get my stuff out there and doing, doing my own thing at that point. So it's not really discouraging. I enjoy looking at the numbers, especially when I get to see different countries and stuff like that. Like I got uh, six countries. It's not a lot of streams in them, but it's six countries right. that are – that Shit. have my, you feel me, listen to it. I ask that because I know sometimes I get discouraged, like even when it comes to the numbers, I'm like, man, fuck, I want this, I want that. It's like, we have these big dreams for ourselves, but we just aren't there yet. And it's like, fuck. That's why I ask that. Cause like, sometimes it can get discouraged. And if like, you're not, you aren't where you want to be or where you see yourself, I guess. Um, but I will be honest. The, the second video I dropped was a little discouraging. Cause I was like, the visuals was fire. Mm. I felt like the promo was good. It's like you put so much work into it, right? Yeah. And, and it was a hot not. day too. It was a real <laughs> hot day. So I was like, I sweat it for this. Shit. I sweat it for y'all. For real. <laughs> it was like, it was probably like eight of us out there, and you see only two of us in the video that's actually part of the video. Mm -hmm. No one else wanted to be in it because it was just too hot. Yeah. So it was like, I put all this work into this one. I'm like, all right, this one gonna do something. Now I'm gonna start doing good on Instagram, and I was like, it's not translating like I wanted to on YouTube. But yeah. you know, it'll come with time though. Right, so uh, you're definitely like you're just one of them people that's like self motivated, self self inspired, and when you, when things are discouraging, it's like you pick yourself back up, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, so it wasn't like that at first, but it's it's gotten to that point now, just because I got I got too much stuff on my shoulders right now, and I got a lot of like stuff anything. going on business wise mm. that I can't really stop. So it's like if I stop right now, then it's, I'm gonna get stagnant, and then everything else around me is gonna get stagnant as well. Right. So you said you started doing music um, while well, taking a series like late 2019? Yeah, October to be exact. October 2019, we in October 2020. What are some things that you know now about the business and the music that you didn't know back then that you, that you should have known or that, or that you wish you would have known? Hmm. Release dates. Hmm. I was not prepared for release dates for my tape. So you I think had that's to... something important that you need to be well aware of? Well uh I was a little cocky as far as coming into it. I'm thinking like, yeah, I know it's gonna go well. I paid for this subscription price for this, the distribution and all that other stuff. I'm like, it's gonna come out immediately that day. Mm. The day before, it was an era, uh, a title change that needed to happen. Wow. And it was me not reading directions. Just thinking I can just go in there, hurry up, do it, and not really paying attention to stuff. And then it happened like a week later, it happened again. So I'm like, oh God. Now I gotta delay my tape twice. All right, just say sorry to everybody, you feel me? And just, it's coming. It's coming when it's coming at this point. So can you walk me through this? Because I'm trying to understand. So when you say release dates, what exactly, it, how, how do we avoid not having to delay our tape? What's the right way to do it? Making sure you prepared in beforehand. Um, how do you be prepared? Uh, I, yeah, that, that is a definite uh, process as well. You definitely got to have to make sure that everything is according as far as like, making sure the beast is paid for, making okay. sure you got your, your BMI and everything set up as far as your royalty so you can make sure you do get paid once you do get a certain amount of streams. Um, making sure everything is, if you do have any samples, you're making sure they're cleared. Okay. Um, it's a lot of stuff that goes into it that you just really gotta, you gotta cross your eyes. I mean, cross your T's and dot your eyes on that one. And it's something that I wasn't, I was thinking I knew but with the process, I learned that I still had a lot more to learn about just release dates, but a whole bunch in general as well outside of that, mm. that goes into promotion wise. I could have did more promotion as far as doing that, more networking as far as doing that. I didn't do a release event. Um, I mean, a listening event or nothing like that. So a lot of that could have helped bolster the first week streams and stuff like that and the numbers and stuff. So it's the stuff I learned for the next time for real. Mm. And it's, it's stuff that you, 
you definitely want to learn by yourself, but at the same time, don't be afraid to ask people those questions neither. Because I feel like a lot of people, especially younger people, um, we're scared to ask older people or people just of our peers about the same questions that they may know, but we just feel like it's going to be embarrassing to ask. Makes sense. Okay. So it's like we, we can't be afraid to ask those type of questions, even if it may be a hard question. It may sound dumb to, to you, but it may make sense to that person you asking because they may have been in that same position and right. you may just not know that because okay. you're just afraid to ask. Okay. So it's just stuff that you just a lot of stuff that you got to get over, basically. That makes sense. All right, man. So uh, tease the row. Um, Appreciate you for coming on my platform and talking to me. Uh, what is it that you want the people to know about you as an artist or just as a person that we might not have touched on? Um, just in my music, you're going to get 100% genuine. I'm not talking about killing and murdering people. It's not the life I live. Um, I'm not no coke deal or nothing like that. You're going to get a whole bunch of, you know, stories. You're going to get stories out of me, real life, details, uh, well, stuff question. that you can live with. Why aren't you making it? Because we, I mean, honestly, we see in Baltimore, we see around the world that a lot of the music that's selling is the ones that's talking about guns, that's talking about drugs. What made you go the opposite way and say, I'm not talking about that? That's not the music I fell in love with, man. Mm -hmm. uh, like, once I actually fell in love with music, it was unlimited as far as what I started listening to. Like, mm -hmm. I can watch The Temptations repeatedly, like, and know the dance steps heart, the, like, by heartbeat. So it's like, that and Five Heartbeats is one of my favorite movies, too. So I'm... I just uh, love all genres of music, so I want some type of substance in my music. And mm. a lot of that stuff doesn't create substance all the time. Right. Now, it can come from a, 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 certain, a certain pain point, and it can tell a story, but a lot of artists, don't, I don't feel like, get to a certain point with it. It's just words at that point. So you're definitely in it for like the long run, and like yeah. it's, not, it's not a quick thing. It's like I want people to, to feel my pain and hear what I'm saying, even if it takes longer than the average artist. I guess. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. I appreciate you, man. Uh, Tease the row. Uh, let the people know where to follow you at, where all your music at, uh, what you got out right now, where they can find, where they can find it at, everything. Oh, you can follow me on my social media at Tease the row. Um, that's on everything: Twitter, Facebook. Mike, I spell it too. Yeah, I about to say T E E J D A W R E W L. Um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, all that. I uh, just dropped a video. Feel no way. Go check that out on YouTube right now. Alrighty, Tease the row. Uh, um, Lante, where we at? Zero, zero, nine. Zero, zero, nine, a, a conversation with Jay Hill, conversation with Tease Darrell. Um, shout out to my guy, Lante, Baseball, because that's just the guy that makes the, uh, the magic happen. Uh, that's all I got. It's a wrap. We out.